All right, what's happening, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Sensible Investing. I just finished listening to the recording of the latest uh, Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting, and I and I had to get this video up because I found it so interesting and so fascinating the way Buffett uh, spent a good portion of the meeting actually talking about the current economic situation and actually comparing it to the Great Depression, right? And I suspect the reason why he did this was because he had a lot, a lot of people, especially his shareholders, go to him and go, you know, will we have another stock market crash? And, uh, you know, is the economy going to implode? Is this going to be another Great Recession? Is this going to be worse than the Great Recession? And Buffett simply just said, look, guys, never bet against America, all right? Which I thought was absolutely fascinating because the question on everybody's mind today is, is this 1929 all over again? Are we going to have another stock market crash? Is this going to be a depression or at least a very, very severe recession? Okay, guys, so what I wanted to do in today's video is to take you through some of the key quotes that Warren Buffett made during this uh, event and, and really run you through what I believe he meant by that, okay? And if you guys follow Buffett, I'm sure all of you are aware that Buffett is not a macro guy, okay? He rarely ever talks about macro. I mean, the closest that Buffett gets to talking about macro is probably interest rates, right? Because every time somebody asks him, oh, you know, what about the macro? He goes, oh, just buy great companies and you'll be fine. And yet Buffett spent 20 whole minutes talking about macro. And what I found was really interesting was when he said this, okay? So he said, if we had the FDIC, which is the Federal Insurance, uh, sorry, Federal Deposit Insurance Scheme, okay, to protect depositors' monies and banks if and when the banks collapse, okay? So if we had the FDIC, we would have had a much different experience in the Great Depression. People blame it on Smoot-Hawley and there's all kinds of things, the margin requirements in 1929, but if you have over 4,000 banks fail where people save and they reach for it and it's gone and it happens in all 48 states to your neighbors, to your relatives, it has to have an effect on the psyche that's incredible, okay guys? And I thought that, that those two paragraphs was absolutely just so spot on with what's happening today at the moment. And guys, if you really want to know what my opinion is about what I believe Buffett meant, have a look at the video that I made comparing the Great Depression of 1929 to today and why I concluded that, you know, what we have today with the current lockdown and the unemployment and the virus, it's nothing even close to what they experienced back in 1929, okay guys? And I know some of you bears might say, well, unemployment's 30 million and whatnot, but guys, let's think about it like this, okay? And I'm not going to cover everything because, like I said, I covered it in that video. So if you guys want a 20-minute deep analysis of it, have a look. But we have to think about what a depression is, okay? A depression is a severe and prolonged downturn in economic activity, okay? So we don't have a severe prolonged downturn. We have a sharp, massive downturn, and there's going to be demand, and there's stimulus up to the absolute wazoo. And we'll cover that later in the video, okay, guys? So we have a short, sharp downturn not a prolonged massive downturn, all right? And it's, it's something that lasts three or more years, all right, guys? And if you have a look at the protests and all of just the pent-up frustration and people want to get outside, I, I do not see this lasting anywhere near three years, and I don't think Buffett does either, okay? And real GDP decline of at least 10%. Now, in quarter one, GDP went down by 4.5%, okay, guys? So we have to keep this in mind. And remember, Buffett kept on talking about the FDIC, right? And and so I think even he sees the fact that we have a lot of liquidity being pumped up into the system and there's going to be a lot of demand, okay? Remember, this is a self-inflicted shutdown to control the virus. Back in 1930s, you had money just vaporized into thin air because you had over 4,000 banks fail, all right? So you had so much money just absolutely disappear. So almost overnight, all the liquidity was gone, and that's why you had both a demand and a supply shock, because everybody was trying to cash the assets out of the bank whilst the banks were blowing up and nobody had any money. So it was like a 
three, four fold compound effect, all right? And, and today we just don't have that, all right? And you can say, look, most Americans don't have any savings, but the ones that don't have any savings, they'll be getting the massive stimulus checks from the government. But if you look at this graph over here, you'll realize that, you know, 40 something plus percent of Americans, they still have at least a few thousand dollars or more in the bank. But back in the 1930s and the Great Depression, that all blew up because even the fact that they had savings, the bank could not give them their savings because the banks blew up, all right, guys? So I think that this is what Buffett is referring to. And the other thing is, look, if you have a look at the map over here, the unemployment benefit, right, because we've got about 31-odd million people unemployed, and if you have a look at the map over here, you will actually realize that there are so many states where the unemployment benefit will cover at least 100% of what you lost, if not, and then some, okay, guys? So if you look at the color over here, if you look at the uh, green in the middle and the dark green, and then the light green, you'll realize that there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine states, all right? Nine states where people will not get at least 100% of what they lost. Now, if you look at the 100% or more, or more than 115%, right? We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 states, more than what they lost, and then the rest of the states, at least what they lost. All right, guys? And, and again, I'm sure that Buffett sees this, which is exactly why he says that, you know, it's probably not as bad, right? Um, and, and I just think that a lot of people are just throwing the baby out with the bathwater, actually forgetting just how much stimulus and liquidity and pent-up demand is going to be once we come out of lockdown. And look, places are already starting to ease their restrictions, all right? Now look, this is what I thought was very interesting. So during the meeting, Buffett said a lot of people asked him, you know, and this was back in 1954, okay? So back in 1954, when the stock market rallied back to all-time highs and then some, which is kind of like what we had today, people asked, is this 1929 all over again? And Buffett said, look, this is really far-fetched, okay? America in 1954 is a completely different country to 1929. The Depression lasted a lot longer in the minds of people than it actually did in its effects. And, and I just thought that that quote was so spot on to what's happening today, okay? Now, I don't live in the States, so I can only give you what I see happening in Australia and New Zealand. But what happened is, during the weekend... I went for a walk to the mall, right? Because it was the first day of them lifting lockdown. And obviously, this is not a photo of the mall that I went to. However, what I can say is, compared to two weeks ago, where there was zero people and zero stores and zero malls, okay? These amount of people, I would say this was at least another 50 to 60% more people on a very popular mall uh, close to where I live, all right? So, first day of lockdown, and the mall, I would say, is probably already at maybe 65, 70% capacity of people, okay? So this really just shows the pent-up demand, right? T take another example, okay? Look at New Zealand, one of, another country to res reduce the restrictions and, and lockdowns, okay? So the, 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 the lines outside McDonald's in New Zealand in terms of the drive through all right? And we're talking about going to McDonald's, getting burgers that taste like cardboard and plastic, right? We're talking about rubber chicken. Look look at the lines out here. Look, look at this drive through line. It goes round the parking lot, through the parking lot, out McDonald's, out into the street. And and guys, and this is this is just them reducing the, the restrictions so that you can now go to drive throughs right? Imagine they start reducing the restrictions on everywhere that people used to love to go to and still love to go to, right? I just do not see demand blowing up because people have money, they have stimulus, they're really frustrated, and all they want to do is go back to a sense of normalcy, all right? And so all this hype about, you know, people aren't going to do what they used to do, I, I, I just don't see it, right? Everybody wants to get back into the normal routine. Now, I just wanted to conclude this video to show you uh, one graph and a quote from Benjamin Graham that Buffett referred to in the in the um, uh, annual shareholder Berkshire Hathaway annual shareholder meeting. Okay, so as you guys can see here, this is the graph, and I added a couple more key points, which um, points to the timeline of what Buffett was referring to. Okay, so we had, as you saw, the Great Depression and things absolutely tanked. 
and then we had a slow recovery and then back in 1954 and Buffett says this because he said it was his best year that he's ever had in the stock market all right back in 1954 the stock market effectively uh, rallied from 280 points to over here just a little over 400 okay and again people were panicking and they lost their minds all right and what happened was you had Senator Fulbright and what what he did was he gathered 20 at the time the best financial minds you know you had Graham you had all sorts of other people and he called these people to testify in front of Congress all right guys so it was such a panic that people actually thought that the Great Depression was going to happen again just because the stock market rallied much like what is happening today all right and Graham went and he said a very simple few words and I just thought it was absolutely profound okay and Buffett you know he had his copy of his uh, intelligent investor book and this is what Benjamin Graham said he said the stock market looks high it is high but it's not as high as it looks all right guys so the stock market looks high it is high but it's not as high as it looks and that was just a beautiful one-line sentence you know and I think what Buffett was referring to was like he said before the effects of the depression the recession lasts a lot longer in our minds than the actual economic effects all right and so guys look that's the end of the video and I just really wanted to put things into perspective for you right because all I see in the financial news is we're gonna have another depression recession right the financial media uh, they just they, they, they just write clickbait for days and you know if we just look at the facts okay and then compare the depression to today I just do not see how we're gonna have a 1929 depression alright guys so look watch my video because I think you'll find a lot of value out of it and I'll include a link for it in the description below until next time happy investing